Hi everybody, my name is Billy. Uh, I got some new pickups out from DiMarzio and uh, they're a little specialized, so I want to do a video about how I install them. It's a little bit different than how some pickups are put in. You can put these in the usual way, so to speak, if you want, but I wanted to give people an idea of what I did that uh, you might find a little bit more to your advantage, possibly. Anyway, these are the pickups. Uh, generally, uh, a pickup is uh, just a flat piece. Here, I'll give you an idea. Here's pick a couple pickup covers that I have. And uh, generally they're just all squared off, sharp edges, and they're flat here. Uh, that was always a problem for me because I wanna get the pickup up close to the strings. So when you get this pickup up close to the strings, this edge hits this string. And on this pickup, this edge hits that string. So I had to shave them down in order to get that out of the way. Another problem I had is these, the, I think it's called a tang, this little spot here where the screw goes in is high. So for my, for my thumb to go against it, I'm pushing up against the little screw thing. I'd like a flat surface there for my thumb to go against for me to pluck. So I would cut these way down uh, in order to, to, to make that happen. So. Uh, for years, uh, I did an epoxy version, we did a molded version, we did all kinds of things to make the pickup conform to what I, what I wanted in that space. We had, uh, I'll give you an example, some of the old ones. Here's one that was just, uh, it's, it's epoxied on top, the epoxy had bubbles in it, it's, it's leveled off there, the tangs are shaved down. The problem with that is it's still the plastic cover, so these tines can break off easily. And as you see, it's all covered and jammed with epoxy, and it's a mess, but they worked. So that was all that mattered. No noise on them either, and it just made a solid little thing on it. So as years went by, I had a couple people make them for me. Yamaha was kind enough to start casting them. So here's an example. They put, you can put a little artwork in there. They would do a cast version. Here's one in red. They do a couple other uh, colors and such. We ended up putting little uh, uh, pieces of the same material in a different color inside the mold. So when you drop the bobbin in, it would always be an equal equidistant to the surface. So you have a prediction of where that bobbin actually was without being able to see it now. But as you can see, it's getting awful complicated and a pain in the neck. So thank goodness along came Larry DeMars and I said, Larry, could we possibly make a pickup that was had all this done to it already? So that's what we have here today, and that's what I'm going to be demonstrating uh, an install for you on how we're going to put these together. And I'll show you some of the features of this pickup in a second as well. And here are the new DiMarzio Relentless from that uh, pickups. Uh, everything I needed uh, is in here, so it makes it real easy for me to just drop this in any base and get the thing I need uh, from pickups. Uh, let me uh, give you a little explanation. Basically, the pickup is built on a piece of circuit board. So we have this nice flat little low piece to screw it into the base, and now the screw is out of the way. So you can rest your thumb on there easily. Another thing that's quite obvious right away is what I did to all my pickups is everything is rounded off. There's no sharp edge on it, edges on it anymore. So when you're, when you're playing and plucking, your finger catches that edge, that can be a painful moment for sure. And as you see, it's beveled on that side a little bit. On the other pickup, it's beveled as well. So that when you put the two of them together, you get the same radius as the radius of the neck. And here's why. If you see a stand-up bass player, they're always playing on the, on the neck. They're playing over the fingerboard and their fingers have something to go against. So as they pluck that note, the string slips out from under, hits the board, and makes the tone. So, so the sliding off that board and contact with that fingerboard is part of the attack of the note on the stand-up bass. So that's, that's kind of an important thing. So when I began to play, I noticed that when these pickups were very close to the strings, it helped me, it was very easy for me to play because what happened is my finger goes over the string while it's sliding on the pickup surface and now what happens is my finger hits at the same place it can't go any farther and it can't go any less because there's a definitive spot for it to hit as it slides across that string hits my finger at the same place every time 
that finger hits, uh, 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 hits the string at the same place every time. So as it slides off, it, uh, it's going to be the same tone. It's sitting in the same place, the same spot on my callus. So a little bit more consistency note to note. That helps. Uh, and basically, and I've said to people for years, basically I'm playing the surface of the pickup and the string is kind of in the way. Very similar to how a stand-up bass player is playing the fingerboard, but the strings are in the way very much. So that's the relationship to a stand-up bass to this. And you'll find you get kind of a more of a stand-up tone a little bit when you get your fingers uh, working on that, possibly for you. It, sometimes I notice that. So what we're gonna do is this is a uh, stock right from the factory uh, Yamaha Attitude Bass. I play stock basses that come out of the same box from the same factory as people who buy them. One of the uh, deals I made with Yamaha when we first began is I want to play the exact bass that people are buying in the store. Because many times when an artist endorses a product, he gets the fancy Bubinga wood uh, version and then you get the plywood version in the store. But these are exactly the ones that come out of the box and it's exactly what I play to keep the, uh, uh, a real honest uh, relationship between me, Yamaha, and the people kind enough to, to purchase this bass. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull this apart, uh, take these pickups out, and replace them with the new ones, and show you the, a couple of little tricks and features that I do that might help you if you decide to get a pickup like this and put it in a bass. Now it can go in any bass that has a typical Fender cutout. This two, two dual pickup thingy is the Fender P bass standard routing, if you will. And uh, many, many, many manufacturers use it besides Fender. Fender, of course, was the first ones that started it. Leo Fender came up with that. God bless him for it. But uh, many other uh, companies use this exact configuration. That's why, why you find so many pickup companies when they make replacement pickups for bass, they do it in this configuration because so many uh, basses are made like this. So I'm going to take this apart, open it up, get these pickups in, hopefully without too much trouble, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, case is open. I got the uh, strings off. I had to get them out of the way, coil them up. They'll go back on later, of course. This now you see on this attitude base how the neck comes in deep into the body and it's underneath that pickup there so that keeps it super stable. So basically, I'm gonna pull these pickups out, unscrew them all. I would use my electric thing, but I don't have a bit small enough to get these screws, so it's, it's a manual labor today. So now this is pretty typical. They're mounted in here in a typical, normal way that most um, pickups are mounted in Fender uh, route base uh, cavities here. Uh, so let me get them. There's a ground uh, screw uh, into the uh, wood and it has a black a carbon paint on it that acts as a shield. And also this uh, metal foil here acts as a shield also to keep these open wires from picking up any kind of radio frequency or interference noise, which does happen sometimes. So I'm unscrewing the ground wire thingy. Okay, so that is off. I'm going to hang on to this screw and put it in a spot here where I can find it again. Get the, the other two screws on this pickup out. Ba, ba, ba. And if you haven't done this very much, uh, and you're not used to uh, uh, fiddling around inside your instrument like this, I recommend that you get somebody to do it for you. Now, I'm just a hack. I'm not a luthier. I'm not a craftsman by any further stretch of the word. Uh, but uh, I've done it enough to know that I can generally get the job done not as clean or sweet and nice as someone who knew what they were doing would do. So any of you craftsmen out here, out there uh, laughing at me, uh, you're going you're gonna to have a, a day of comedy watching me at work. So here we are. Here's the two pickups. One has a green wire, one has a red wire. So that's good to know. Now underneath the pickups we see some foam. Now this is the thing that I'm mostly concerned with. When I have the pickup in the instrument, I want it to be solidly there. 
I don't want to be able to push it and have it bounce back and forth. So with the foam, that's kind of what happens. So I just rip it out of there, yank it out of there, tear it out of there. Not easy all the time sometimes. I'll grab a little needle nose and force the issue to get it out of there. There you go, and I ripped. Anyway, just get it the heck out of there, one way or the other, because there's just not enough pushback from this foam. It'll hold it in the position, but it won't stop my fingers from pushing it down in. So every note I play means the pickup moves. Not a good thing. Eventually those wires inside moving back and forth are not designed to move back and forth. They could conceivably break. And plus it also can make a noise sometimes, a little click clack every time the uh, pickup pushes down below where the screw is and back up to hit the uh, head of the screw. So we almost got it there now. Okay, that's good enough. So what I'm gonna do, the, the uh, basis for my mounting uh, little technique is Kind of a surgical tubing thing. Now uh, I believe this one came from a spear gun, a scuba diving spear gun, uh, this one because it has a very small center diameter. That way the screw for the pickup is going to go in there just nicely. Uh, there are other ones, uh, this is straight up surgical tubing. It's good but it doesn't have a real wide amount to it so it could kind of flip flop as you push down. It would work. Fender is hip to this also, so they make genuine fender part. A little small one, uh, th this would work too, maybe you double them up a little bit. Uh, but the surgical tubing, if you can find it with a center diameter of about, oh, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch, that way these screws are going to go in there solidly and you won't have a problem with them. I hope it comes back out. Okay, there it is. So what I do generally, I prepped for this a little bit, is I'll cut the little pieces off. And what's going to happen is with this pickup, I'm going to put the screw in there. An important thing about the screw, which uh, I, I was not, uh, I, I've noticed on sometimes, sometimes they don't do this, the screw has to have a shaft, a smooth shaft, and then the threads. Why? Because the shaft will catch. And so as you push down, it catches on there and it sticks. You don't want that. Hopefully you can't push it down that hard by, by the process we're about to do, but you want to be, have to be able to slip on that a little bit. These screws are from DiMarzio. I believe they will be included in the uh, little kit you get when you buy the pickup. So what's going to happen then is this, these little pieces of surgical tubing are going to go underneath there. Then that goes into the wood. A couple things happen. When you have uh, the uh, foam in the middle and you screw it in, you're basically pushing down on both ends against the middle so it could conceivably snap or break. The new ones won't because they're rock solid. The old ones could because it's just a little piece of thin plastic there. I'm not concerned at all about the new DiMarzio is doing that at all. That is a, that's a piece of very thick circuit board fiberglass. It ain't gonna happen, but nevertheless, you could conceivably torque it down enough that something could separate and break off. So if you have the resistance underneath it, all it's going to do is push against itself. So it's, there won't be any pressure on the middle. So that's the whole theory behind that. So uh, there's a couple of things to watch out for. One is uh, the original screws are, are long to compensate for uh, how thick the tang is, and then it gives you about an inch of screw to go in. Now, any longer, you could conceivably pop through the back of the instrument. So when you go to a shorter one, you've got an inch and a quarter, which could be the difference between you going through the back of the wood or not. I have, it hasn't ever happened to me, but I'm all, always a little conscious of the uh, idea that that screw could go too far. That's why, along with these, or available from DiMarzio, at least, will be the shorter screws. Now, the other problem that you may come into when you use the shorter screw is the original screw went in much deeper. So if you do have a problem with that, I shaved off from a piece of a hardwood veneer with a little utility knife, a little piece of wood, which you could stick in there and give you uh, more for that screw to grab onto. It's kind of a hack way of doing it, but in fact, uh, it does work. So uh, I, I, let me see how these are holding up. When I first put them in, yeah, they look pretty solid. 
it's grabbing really well, so I don't think it's going to be nearly any kind of a problem. So I'm going to ignore that idea. But in case that screw isn't holding the shorter screws, just take a little piece and counterintuitively, you don't put it in this way. You put it in reverse because the angle of that screw, you want it to catch more at the front and get out of the way in the back. So pop that in. Or you can use a toothpick. If you want to get a little bit more elaborate, dip the toothpick in Elmer's glue, put it in there, snap it off. There's a nice small screw hole that will hold anything as you're going in. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to remove these two pickups. But when I do it, I'm going to cut the wire, the red wire and the black wire. I'll know now where those go because I'm not going to cut them off completely. I'm just going to take it off enough to leave a little bit of the red wire and a little bit of the black wire left. Why? Because later on, what if I can't remember which pole piece it was on? Again, I'm a hack. I'm not an electronics guy. An electronics guy could look at it and tell you and know right away which one to do it. But in case I forget and I'm backstage or in a hotel room and it's chaos. So I just leave a little bit of the uh, wire from the pickup on there to make sure that uh, I remember which pole or which uh, connector it goes to on the pots inside. That's one little thing I learned the hard way from <laughs> trying to uh, figure out which one it went on. Eventually I got it and it was okay, but to prevent that from happening again, that's how I do it. And then we're going to uh, do some soldering and uh, get the new pickups in there and I'll show you how I'm dropping them into the, uh, to the actual route in the body and how I'm using the uh, little piece of surgical tubing to, to facilitate that. All right, so here's the first pickup going in. I'm not going to wire them first, of course. Uh, when this drops in, it's got its wire coming out. So I'm going to snake that around this corner and that way. So when I put it in, I'll leave it hang there and then I'll make sure it can go over here. And it's got to get out of the way of this pickup. It's a very important thing. Sometimes if it's a little too crammed in there, you might want to get yourself a Dremel Moto tool and carve in a little bit of a spot for the wire. Uh, not illegal. Uh, be careful though, because if you slip and get the finish, you don't want to do that. So keep that in mind. So now here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take this particular pickup and since the high is up a little bit more, or I'm sorry, the middle is up a little bit more, I'm going to use the longer one for the middle and a little tiny bit shorter one for this edge. So here's how it's going to go down. I'm going to take this, put it through the pickup, put the piece of surgical tubing on there, do the same on the other side. One advantage of using the tight uh, 16th of an inch opening is it generally stays on the screw when you put it in. So as you're trying to manipulate it into the screw hole, uh, it, it won't go flopping off and bouncing underneath the, the table in the garage. So there it is. These are now ready to go in. And that's what we have here as the basis of what's happening. That rubber is going to push against those things, keep it rock solid and we're going to be in great shape. So now the trickiest part here is keep an eye out where that, where that wire is, is lining it up to that screw hole. So you might have to do a little dancing around to get this uh, in the right spot. So I'm going to play with it here until I get it in the hole like that. And then I'll make sure by making a few turns if I'm actually in the screw hole. Yes, I am. So that one is set. Same thing with this here. A little playing. Let me see if I got it in the uh, in the spot. Not quite yet. A little a little manipulation here. A little moving around. Okay, it's not going in yet. There we go. I got it. So now I can feel them catching the threads and being pushed down. So I'm going to just get them in place. I'm not going to torque them down too hard at this point. Okay, so there it is. You see already, it's kind of hard to push down which is good. Here's the beveled side, which is going to come up and miss the string. And, I'm, and now I'm going to take this wire and kind of get it out of the way for the other pickup to be put in. So start out with this one. I think it's a better idea. Here's uh, the same situation. The middle is going to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to use a little bit longer piece there. Screw goes through, goes into that like this here and a little bit shorter. I'll use a longer of the two, this one, into the other screw. Hey, see? That's what you don't want to have happen. 
They always go onto the workbench, <laughs> no matter what. It's uh, Murphy's Law. There we go. Now this one's ready to go in the same situation. So we'll do the same with this. This is a little tight up here. I'll try to eyeball it into the uh, opening as best I can and get it started. Here we go. Almost there. Apologize. Okay. I think that's it. Okay, we got it. All right. And again, now we got these two wires here. If you want to bring that camera over and take a little look at this, they're out of the way and they're going through into the control cavity. So now this one's a little bit easier to find because I'm not up against that wall here. So we could, should be easy to find and sure enough, right away we got it and we're in. Okay, that's the main thing. That's the thing that's most important to me, getting that tubing underneath those screws so it'll hold that rock solid. Now, as another point, later on, if they, you want the pickups to be absolutely flat as the string goes over them. If, if one is up a little bit, the string will hit it here and you'll get a, a note which probably won't be in tune. So you want them absolutely flat. If they're not absolutely flat, once you get the pick guard back on, you can use a pick or a little piece of wood or something to get in there and shim them. And that will generally stay there because it's under pressure. If not, you get a little thicker one or even put a little bit of uh, something sticky on it to hold it in. Again, well, there's a will, there's a way, and that's not the craftsman way of doing it. That's my hack hotel room repair way of doing it. So now we have the, uh, uh, the, the, the wires out, the pickups are in, they're ready to go. Uh, so now I'll trim the wires down, get them ready to connect to the red and black that I trimmed off earlier and uh, we'll be ready to put it back together after that. All right, so I've got the wires in. I trimmed one uh, and then uh, stripped the wire down to there. I took the other one, which has a shield in it, stripped the wire. Uh, so now, because this one is gonna, has longer to travel, so I'll keep that in mind. This one here, uh, we're gonna connect. What I do is I keep the original uh, pickups. Even uh, sometimes you'll find that, uh, even with some different manufacturers that do different color coding and different things, so I, I kind of, that's one reason why I trimmed them and took them all out as one piece so I could really take a look because I don't recall this stuff. I'm not an electrical guy, electrician guy, so I don't really know. But I just, if you just copy what's in there, you should be fine in, in theory, and generally it works out. So what they have is they have the green and white and black and red. Green on this one goes to ground, and white goes to black, which goes to the other pickup, and red comes out, and that's hot. Okay, so we're gonna just duplicate that with the new wiring. It's the first time I've done it, so bear with me. So we're gonna take uh, this now. We have, uh, there's your green wire right there. And got a little bit of extra stuff in there to keep it uh, uh, shielded and what have you. So I'm gonna make sure I get uh, the two colors I need. I might strip this back a little bit more, a little wire stripper here. If you do it with a razor blade or something else, uh, it gets precarious. I'd recommend to get uh, a proper little wire stripper thingy. Uh, it's worth the investment. If you're gonna be doing things like this anyway, you'll use it again. It's helpful. So, uh, okay, so now we got the, uh, you'll see some other stuff in there. We got a little plastic uh, material. Uh, this is a, a, a cable with a couple things in it. I'll take a scissors and trim this off real quickly. Get it out of the way. Ba ba ba. There it is. Thank you very much. Now I've got the shielding wire, the white, and the green wire. So on this one, it doesn't have a shielding wire. So what do you do with it? I'm not sure exactly. I'm going to probably connect it to ground. I hope that's right. So with this little thing that was in there before, I'll unsolder this from there and we'll utilize that. But we know that the white is gonna go to the black. So I'll take that black and trim it right there. This is the part that if you have done this already, you know all this, so you can go right, go right to work. The main thing is putting those little uh, surgical tubing things. But I'll go along uh, all the way here just to make sure everybody knows. I'm gonna trim this off right here. Uh, I'm not sure if this will work on that thin of a wire, but I'll give it a shot, see what happens. And it does, thank you very much. It's 
same thing. Ba, ba, ba. So these two are going to go together. So now if you want to put, uh, if you want to get fancy and do a little heat shrink tubing to make sure none of these open wires touch anything. If all the wires are cut and flowing around in there, uh, a little drop of solder can short them out or anything like that. So I try sometimes to do a little heat shrink tubing on them, which is uh, available anywhere. Put that on the, uh, I'm going to twist these so I can solder them together. Twist these so I can solder them together. Okay, so the black one goes on. I'm going to put over the longer black one so it's got room for the heat sink to, to get in the spot there. There we go, very good. Now I'll tin both with the hot soldering iron, preheated, somebody's thinking. And a little solder, here it is here. And we're ready to start this uh, procedure. So I get a little solder on this one here. Thank you very much. A little solder on this one. The shrink moved out of the way. I'll solder it first and put it on later. Tin nicely. Very good. Now that heat shrink tubing, let me get that out of there. Put this in a place where it's not going to burn anything else besides me. There it is down in there. Okay, heat shrink tubing moves on this. And we're ready to connect these two together. And that's what we'll do. I'm going to trim this back a little bit. So, because we don't need all that wire. Good, thank you very much. Now, this is kind of a hard part sometimes because you got to hold that wire in, in its place. If you're all by yourself, which I generally am when I'm working on my gear, it's kind of hard to hold it. So I'll do my best. I might do it off camera <laughs> just so you don't, you don't hear me swear. So I'm going to trim this one down a little bit too. Okay. And I will now work on getting these black connected to white and then heat shrink tubing over the top of them in theory. Okay, so get, get them lined up right and uh, I have a little third hand thing but I won't, I won't set it up at this point. I'll just, uh, maybe I will do so off camera and we'll come back to you when this thing actually gets soldered. How about that? All right, so I cheated. I did all the soldering and wiring with the camera off because I didn't want to hear you, have you hear me swearing. So uh, I, bear with me for that. So I've got the red to the red, the black to the black. I've got the white to the uh, green to the ground. The sh extra shielding wire that goes through that cable, I have the new cable, I have that connected to ground also. Uh, so we turn the uh, volume up and plug it in and sure enough, a plane going by you can't hear it but it's I hear the pickup are both working and one other thing I might want to point out about these pickups they're actually uh, encased in metal the uh, pickups themselves let me get another another version of it here the pickups themselves the case of it it goes all the way around it's actually made of metal do a nice close-up here if you can now your first thing you might say is, well, metal's magnetic. It's going to ruin everything. Well, it's a nickel, so it's non-magnetic. Uh, Larry DeMarzo did a lot of research of what surfaces will not uh, inhibit the magnetic uh, pull from the pickups. So uh, they can be of any kind of uh, finish you want. These, I generally prefer the black, but they come in like shiny mirror gold, shiny mirror silver, rose gold. They're going to have uh, some printing on some of them. There's unlimited possibilities. But the one great advantage the metal does for this is it does act as a shield, which is, uh, which is great. Uh, uh, so I've had a friend of mine uh, check these out on a live gig, a live gig where there was a lot of hum and buzz in a club, and he didn't have any hum or buzz trouble that night. So that's why you want to keep uh, everything uh, shielded up, connected inside the base. Uh, if your base doesn't have it, doesn't have the... Uh, a little piece fell in there. If your base doesn't have the carbon painting in there, it's easy to find that. You can go to Stuart McDonald or look on Amazon and find a conductive carbon paint. 
and you want to paint the inside all black with the carbon. That acts as a shield against radio frequency noise and stuff. So, but that's an aside. That doesn't really have much to do with what we're doing here today. But the pickups are in. Now I'm going to take this and reinstall it. This is another tricky part because you're gonna have, you don't want to have the wires cut close because then you can't pull this back and work on it each time you open it. You've got to have some, uh, sometimes they call it a service loop, uh, uh, en enough wire in there to be able to pull the thing back out again if you need to uh, service it. So you got to look around sometimes and make sure nothing is sticking out and catching in between the pick guard and the, yeah, I'm good over here, the pick guard and everything else. So double check. If you see it, you can poke it in there with a little uh, screwdriver or whatever, but just get it all in and settled in. And now it's ready, down flat. And now it's ready to be screwed back in. So I'll do that off camera because that's boring. And then I'll show you how I'm going to set up these pickups uh, with the strings to make them do what they do. There you have it. Well, we've reassembled the base. Uh, it's all wired up, ready to go. You saw me put the uh, surgical tubing underneath the uh, pickups to hold them. You notice they don't move down too easily. They're not adjusted fully yet. Uh, so now I'm gonna put the strings back on. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a little adjustment of the height, get it where I want, and then I'll adjust the pickups. And uh, we'll get it playing really well. I've had a couple of friends come over and before we had these pickups, and I just did a little trim job on the pickup, cut the tangs down, did, did what I did in the old days with the, with the monstrosities, and uh, they were uh, very, very pleased with how much better the bass played, how much uh, less clacking and string noise and everything like that. Uh, so even if you got a, a beat up old bass or a bass that's not worth much money, if you set it up properly, you can make it play great. I, have a, I had a bunch of spare parts uh, from the old days and I bought like a $50 body and a $35 neck of some shyster site on, on, on the internet. Slapped them together with the help of a friend uh, in LA uh, and uh, they play great. Uh, if, you, if you set them up right, it, it can be done. So I'm going to reattach the strings and then I'll show you how I do the adjustments. Okay, bass is strung up. Uh, this is a bass I haven't done any setup on at all. So this G string is way up. So I'm gonna drop it down a bit here to where it should be. A reasonable uh, string height that allows you to dig in but not bottom out against the frets. That's kind of the ideal situation you want. So we drop this back down a little bit. So a little high for me, so I'm going to take it down a little bit more. And again, a proper setup, if you do it right, if you learn how to do it, very important. When I was younger, there was nobody to work on their guitars, you were on your own. Nobody knew what any of these screws did or how it all worked. But generally people back in those days, that's how old I am, uh, most people were proficient with tools and knew how to do things. and. Most every dad was a home handyman. My dad and my big brother, they both were expert craftsmen in their field, so I picked up a lot of things from them. A great wood shop I had at uh, my high school, learned a lot of things like that. So you eventually learn how to do these things. So it's a good idea to know it. Uh, a lot of guys now want to rely on some crew guys or tech or whatever, but even for me, even though we got crew guys that will do everything if I want, wanted them to, but I, I, I prefer to give them a break and let them do their own thing while I do this because I, now I'm better tuned into the instrument. 
I think if you do your own setups and your own repairs, you kind of know more what's going on with things. It's not essential. And some guys have, who, are, who are much more successful than I have never done that. But just this, this the way I see it for myself. Now the strings are, they're still a little high, but you see now, those, those pickups now follow the arc of those strings. So now when I play, I'm playing over that pickup. So it's, a, so it's easy. Now this one, that's too tight there. So we drop it in a little bit more. Get it down a little bit. Come on, baby. There you go. Get it in there. It's moving now. You want to give them enough. So I always go from the top fret to get enough clearance to get it uh, to ring. That's a little tight too. I'll drop that down a little bit more. Next one. That's about right. This one I like the pickup to come up to it a little bit. And they move very easily because they're under pressure now from that surgical tubing. Now the other, the only other thing I would do is make sure that they're absolutely flat against them. Now these came out pretty good. Uh, if they didn't, I would shim them on one side or the other to make them, you see how easily they move. I don't know if you can see that movement or not, but they do move easily. So now the bass is kind of ready to go uh, uh, and should play pretty well. So that thing is really helping out my right hand as a surface to play on underneath. Now, even if you don't use it as a surface like I do, and you put it down deeper into the body, at least it's not sharp. And you've got a great spot here for your thumb to rest. There's no screw there anymore. So uh, that's the story of uh, mounting my pickups. Again, the, the key element is that surgical tubing, putting it underneath there. That's, uh, that's, the, that's uh, been very helpful for me. You can put it in with just regular foam if you want, uh, or however you normally do it. Uh, these pickups are adaptable to just about any kind of situation you could imagine. Somebody's driving past. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the key elements of advantage of these are the uh, comfort, the smoothness, no sharp edges. Screws are out of the way. Shielded around the entire pickup with the metal casing, and also the wire coming off there is shielded too. So super low noise. And as far as the tone of them goes, uh, it's subjective. Uh, they're relatively flat, a nice mid-range punch. Uh, you'll see online, uh, a couple of people have uh, written reviews about them and talked about the tonality of them. I love them. And they're good, not, the thing I like about them is they're good not just for me and my, and my shtick. Uh, I think a lot of players will enjoy this, no matter what kind of music you do. You don't, don't play anything like me, you still may find this to be a very uh, helpful, useful thing. And like I said, it's going to come also with open pole pieces uh, in different colors. And eventually, they're going to do a jazz bass version of it as well, which is pretty cool because jazz pickups, uh, jazz bass pickups are also sharp and have an edge to them. And it'd be a little bit more comfortable to guys who prefer that uh, to use them. So that's my story of my pickup install. I hope it was helpful. And like I said, I'm not a craftsman or a luthier. I'm just a hack. So uh, if, you're, if you're still laughing at me, go right ahead because I laugh at me too with uh, some of the, uh, the uh, measures I go through to make things work when I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But uh, uh, give them a try. Uh, research them a little bit. And if you do choose to get these pickups and put them in your base, I hope they serve you well. There you have it. Thanks a lot.